Why did the demons ask Jesus for the pig specifically? This is a question few of us truly understand. I have been a Christian all my life and never understood the depths of this passage until now. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Jesus and his disciples were on a boat crossing the Sea of Galilee. Suddenly, a violent storm arose, and the disciples, fearing for their lives, begged Jesus to calm the storm. Jesus then proceeded to calm the wind and the waves. After the storm was miraculously calmed, Jesus and his disciples continued across the Sea of Galilee until they arrived at the opposite shore in the region of the Gerasenes. Jesus was now in the Decapolis, a predominantly Gentile territory, which explains the presence of pigs, an animal considered unclean by the Jews. Gentiles raised pigs as a means of occupation. Pigs were a source of food and a source of income. A man possessed by an unclean spirit came out of the tombs to meet Jesus. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could restrain him, not even with chains, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons clasped around his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in his right mind and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs running off the cliffside as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. So Jesus obliged. As Jesus was leaving and getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus did not let him. Jesus said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell all in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. As for the demons, their use of the exact correct titles of Jesus Christ shows us that they know another stronghold of Satan in the spiritual realm is being invaded and overtaken by the kingdom of light. The demons knew who Jesus was. However, despite this understanding, they remain demons. Knowing Jesus, but hating him, is demonic. The title, Son of God, should be understood in its richest sense. The demons recognize Jesus not only in terms of his power, but also of his person. He was the Messiah, the Son of God. The legion of demons knew they would be tortured and rejected eternally, as we are told in Jude 6. What do you want with us, Son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torment us before the time? This foreshadows the arrival of the kingdom, as well as the invasion and conquest of Satan's strongholds. Despite the fact that the hour of final judgment awaits Jesus' return in glory. By asking this question, they acknowledge that Jesus is the one who will perform this judicial duty at the appointed time, thus confirming the title of the Son of God. The fact that Jesus is limiting their activity before the appointed time indicates that the expulsion of demons by Jesus was a sign that the kingdom was approaching. These demons seem to be well aware of a predetermined time for the judgment of Satan's fallen angels. 
The demons begged Jesus to send them into the pigs, which he did. After receiving permission from Jesus, the demons left the man and entered the herd of pigs. When the demons entered the herd, the pigs went crazy and rushed off a cliff into the Sea of Galilee. Ironically, the demons' attempt to avoid eternal punishment led to the destruction of their earthly hosts. Jesus had no reason not to accept their proposal as it served his purposes. First, it resulted in the man's liberation from the demons. Second, the pigs were unclean creatures according to the Torah, therefore an appropriate safe haven for the demons. Jesus did not destroy the demons. Instead, he allowed evil to run its course in this world until the day when everything will be corrected. Jesus was not sinning by accepting the demons' suggestion. On the other hand, Jesus' encounter with Satan in the wilderness was completely different. If Jesus were to yield to Satan's demands, he would be led into disobedience. As a result, Jesus rebuked Satan with the scriptures and refused to give in to his demands. This is the main distinction between the two cases. The petition of the demons in Matthew 8 did not lead Jesus to sin, whereas Satan's demands on Jesus were intended to lead him to sin. The demons begged to be sent to a nearby herd of pigs, which would seem ideal for the Jews, who considered pigs and demons to be of the same order. Jesus warned his disciples not to cast pearls before pigs, as in Matthew 7 verse 6. According to Peter, false teachers are people who will return to their pagan fleshly ways, like pigs return to wallowing in the mud. However, as the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee was a Gentile area, this was not a wild herd, but pigs being raised to be sold on the market. Their owners would be devastated if they lost this huge herd, which Mark estimates at about 2,000 pigs in total. The demon's request to enter the pigs has an additionally deadly purpose. Demons are known to inflict harm and agony on God's creation and do everything possible to fuel hostility against Jesus and his invasion of Satan's stronghold. The destruction of the pigs leads the Gentiles of the region to ask Jesus to leave. This response shows where those Gentiles' values truly were. For normally, one would expect them to rejoice in a victory over Satan's demons and the stronghold of darkness. However, instead of rejoicing in Jesus, the Gentiles rejected Jesus because they preferred the pigs. They chose the pigs over Jesus, and that is so telling. As we see it so clearly in the modern world today, people are still choosing the unclean pigs over Jesus. It's a sad reality. When the herdsmen told what happened to the inhabitants of the nearby city, the whole community became enraged with the Savior. What was their main issue? It was the potential economic downfall and loss of business. They were more concerned about their economic well-being than their spiritual health. When they saw Jesus approaching the city, they asked him to leave. That says it all. And unfortunately, we are guilty of the same mistake. At times, we have grown accustomed to living with sin and do not want to think about God removing it, especially if it means losing perceived pleasures or income. But holding on to sin is one of the most toxic things we can do. We can't be like those people and choose the pigs over Jesus. Reflecting on our propensity for sin and resistance to allowing God to remove it especially if it implies the loss of pleasures or income, is deeply rooted in Scripture. The Bible often addresses the conflict between earthly desires and obedience to God. Jesus talks about the impossibility of serving two masters, emphasizing that we cannot serve both God and money. This teaching highlights the idea that loyalty to sin and the pursuit of material gain can lead us away from God. The story of the Gerasens, where the inhabitants preferred their pig-based economy over Jesus, illustrates a recurring pattern in Scripture where people often choose worldly interests over spiritual life.
In Romans 12, Paul urges Christians not to conform to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of their minds so that they may discern the will of God. This suggests that resistance to sin and spiritual transformation are fundamental to our faith. This encounter with the Gentiles also shows once again that Jesus' ministry is not limited to the Jews. It shows that opposition to Jesus is not exclusively Jewish. In that sense, it confirms that the opponents in Matthew are not chosen based on race, but according to their response to Jesus. Jesus' ministry extending to the Gentiles is a central theme in the New Testament. Ephesians 2 discusses how Christ removed the barrier between Jews and Gentiles, creating in himself a new people. This inclusion of Gentiles in the promise of salvation reflects the universality of God's love and mercy. It reinforces the idea that opposition to Jesus and his message is not based on ethnicity or cultural origin, but on the disposition of the heart to respond to him. In the book of Acts, we see that the gospel extends beyond Jewish borders, reaching various cultures and peoples. In Acts 10, Peter has a vision that leads him to understand that the gospel is for everyone, not just for Jews. This demonstrates that Jesus' message is calling all people, regardless of their background, to repent and turn to God. Therefore, the episode of the Gerasenes and the lessons learned from it highlight a key principle of Christianity. Salvation and God's truth are open to all, and the true obstacle is human reluctance to abandon sin and follow Christ. Let us learn this lesson and learn it well, to let go of our pigs and follow Jesus.